Welcome back, folks. Forget about fierce rivalry. Right at the break, we just had a UM dance team member get proposed to, and of course, love is in the air. She said, yes, it's February. And guys, the student section is one of the fiercest. Right now, they're a little bit uh, a little bit dazed and confused, but they're one of the fiercest in the country. This is one of the best rivalries in the nation for a reason, and they're hyped tonight. Back to you. Thanks, Keith. Yep. I'm here baseline with U.S. Senator John Tester. John, it has been an electric atmosphere here today. How does it feel to be here for the Brawl of the Wild? That's unbelievable. I'm telling you, you're walking this place, you can feel the energy. And you, I mean, a game that starts out with an alley-oop dunk, you know, it's a different level. And I just love it. First one of these games I ever went to, I was sitting in nosebleed heaven 30 years ago. It was a great game then. It's still a great game. Now, that, that game 30 years ago, there was some interesting thing that happened pregame. Can you just tell us uh, what came down from the ceiling? Well, the, one of the military guys rappelled down with the game ball and handed it to the official before the... Good evening, Montana, and thank goodness it's Friday because it's time for the SWX Takeover. I'm Keith DeMolder. We hope that you've got your popcorn and soda ready because we're bringing you the best of high school football from the Treasure State, and we start right here in the Garden City. We flap our wings and fly to Missoula. Big Sky hosting Billings West. We kick off the start of football season in a big way. First quarter we go, ball on the 40. Josh Erbacher with the absolute cannon for Billings West. Slings this pass deep down the sideline for Connor Ryan, who flies into the end zone for their first TD. 7-0 West is up. And they say that every dog has its day. Well, how about a whole weekend? Here at the Missoula County Fairgrounds, the American Kennel Club is having its annual dog show. And while there might be some diamonds in the rough, every dog is best in show. The three-day event kicked off in Missoula on Thursday. At I'm Keith Demolder in Missoula. A couple of Loyola Sacred Heart student athletes signed their letter of intent. We'll tell you who they are and where they'll be playing coming up in a bit. Brune and Silver, let's hand things off to Keith Demolder in Missoula. Hi, Keith. Yeah, that's right, Chris. The drive to the title, the countdown to Des Moines, whatever you want to call it, Grizz Nation is ready for Thursday's first round matchup with Michigan. Grizz basketball fans gathered this morning to celebrate the team's success and to send them off to Des Moines. Excitement was high as the Grizz went back to back last Saturday, winning their second Big Sky Conference title in two years and earning another trip to the NCAA tournament. While their game against Michigan is a rematch from 2018, that's not keeping down spirits in the Garden City. Thanks so much, guys. I'm Keith Mulder here at Allegiance Field, Ogren Park. And what is the best way to kick off opening day here at the ballpark? How about a victory? Well, the Osprey did just that. Defeating the Great Falls Voyagers 7-4 to it was a great day throughout. They had some carnival games starting at the beginning. They had kids everywhere. It was truly a family affair. Let's get to those highlights. We'll have those highlights for you, of course, tomorrow night right here on SWX Tonight. All right, well, we now move from one world event to another. The International Olympic Committee announced this week that breakdancing could make its way to the Paris Olympics in 2024. That's absolutely right, B-Boy Sean. So today I decided to send in my audition tape to try and make Team USA. Check it out. <laughs> now are these some moves or what? You know that breakdancing, you gotta go on the ground. Welcome to SWX Tonight, everyone. It's Martes por la Noche for our Spanish-speaking viewers. And Tuesday night, for everyone else, I'm Sean Rainey. And I don't know, I'll just read what's in the prompter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Keith Mulder. Hola, and como estas, Montaña? Hope your evening is going well. And let's make it a little bit better with some Montana Deportes tonight. We had an all-star track event today in Missoula. Some of the most caliente competition from across the western part of the state converging at the Russ Pilcher Top 10 meet. We have those highlights from the track as well as the field coming your way in just minutes. Welcome back, folks. Thanks for keeping it with us. Much to Adam Shelf's delight, the NBA playoffs. We're back in action tonight for a full slate of Eastern Conference games. We start first with a North versus South battle as the Toronto Raptors went down to Orlando to take on the Magic. Former Trojan forward Nikola Vucevic going up against former San Diego State Aztec Kawhi Leonard. Gotta love my SoCal guys. First quarter, though, it's all Raptors and Pascal Siakam. How do you do? Toronto up 10-0 to start, and then Siakam again. Grab the AC. There's a reason why every corner is 90 degrees. Pascal too hot, but check out this shot near the end of the half. Terrence Ross, oh baby. You know his punt is filled because he owns half the court. 
court, get it, like a unit of measurement. I like it. Anyway, second half we go. Mama, there goes that Aggie. Siakam goes to KFC on this one, gets the bucket and the foul. He finishes the game with the 30 rack and the dub. Raps win, 98-93 the final. And the foul, F-O-W-L. Exactly, guys. Ooh, on fire. All right, game three, 2-0 Boston. Actually cataloging the weight of all of their 3,500 animals. Yeah, the information will be stored in an international <laughs> database to help zookeepers keep track of the endangered species. Any guess on how much a spider weighs? A spider? A couple ounces. Yeah, I, would I thought probably you were not supposed agree. to ask a woman's weight. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Come on. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks for joining. Keith, I am loving the bow tie. How is it feeling outside right now? Well, Stella, right now, if you asked me this question about a couple seconds ago, I would say it was quite hot. The sun was out, it was beaming, but now the clouds are starting to come in, and, and I think they might be here to stay. Nevertheless, baseball is back here in the Garden City. The Missoula Osprey taking on the Great Falls Voyagers for the home opener here in Missoula, and it's been a great day. There were some carnival games going on. Luis Gonzalez, a couple of MLB legends, are in attendance tonight. We'll have more on that coming up a little bit later, but for now, here from Ogren Park at Allegiance field i'm keith the motor we'll send it back to you guys good afternoon ladies and gentlemen welcome inside to swx's live presentation of montana softball right here on the swx sports network as the montana grizzlies host for the final time this year the northern colorado bears keith the motor riley corcoran live here from grizzly softball field in beautiful missoula montana it's the final home series of the year, and unfortunately, Mother Nature raining on the parade. It sure is, but I tell you what, the game atmosphere is going to be intense. How's it going, Montana? I'm Keith DeMolder. So there's a theory in education called the Big Fish Little Pond Effect that states academically advanced students will be more successful if they're at the top of their class versus the bottom. Well, for years, the Belgrade Panthers were that exact big fish in the small pond of Class A, but not this year. Annika Cook tells us more about the Panthers' transition to AA. With the Belgrade Panthers scheduled into the AA game book. Now we go to some Class B action. Special game, Florence and Jefferson battling under the lights. And check this out. Jefferson quarterback Avery Styles eats mustard from a tray during the game. Let's see if that will help him out. Ironically enough, he doesn't have enough mustard on this pass. Picked off by Florence's Colby Coleman. Jefferson would get the ball back again and try some trickery with the halfback pass, but hocus pocus, it's Coleman again with the interception. Jefferson up 15-7 at the half, but then Florence says, that's enough. Second half kickoff, Eli Christensen, he's going to bobble it at first, but then take it 85 yards for the TD. PAT was no good. Florence pulls it out in the end. They win 28-15. to The score is 4-3 Hornets after the first inning, and then things slowed down offensively. After that, speaking of Hornets, I got stung by a bee shooting the Grizz <laughs> football uh, spring scrimmage. This Dropped guy, the camera. Luckily, it didn't break. He will put his yeah. body on the line for this show. And if that's not a reason to watch every single night, I don't know what is. Have a good weekend, everybody. <laughs> Take it easy. Keith the Molder. Keith, what do you got? Welcome back to the game, everybody. Obviously, as we mentioned throughout the broadcast, tonight is the final home game of the regular season. Senior night was on Saturday, but tonight is the final game for a couple of these seniors here in Dahlberg Arena. Bobby Moorhead, Jamara Co, Ahmad Rory, Michael Ogine, and Donovan Dorsey playing their last games here in Missoula. So tonight is a very special night. And interestingly enough, you know, Rory and uh, Ako and Dorsey, they're all transfers from other schools, but they came to Montana because they believed in what Travis DeCure was teaching them. And it's got to be an emotional night for all these guys. And they're trying to get a win out there. Back to you. All right, thanks, Keith. So hot outside. Oh, I know. But I just have to say, since we're switching gears and talking about sports, you have teddy bears yes, on your side. Yes, very grizzly theme today. We got the grizzly bears, we got the maroon and silver because football is finally back. We'll be talking with a couple wideouts, so stay tuned for that after the break. I'm here with Coach Secure. Coach, you're up by nine. What did you like in that first half from your boys? Uh, offensively, I thought we did a good job executing, attacking their zone. Uh, obviously, you got to make open shots, right? And we did that. Uh, and I also thought defensively we did a good job. Uh, we just got to minimize our breakdowns or we'd be sitting in a little better spot. Tyler Hall, he had 15 at the break. What do you have to do to minimize a guy like that from Montana State? You can't leave him open. We, we had three or four times where we just lost him. And he's going to make open shots. We got to minimize those. He was shooting. Okay, we have some more Montana Grizzly basketball coverage tonight, and this is a story that will test your pop culture knowledge. We shift gears a little bit here, but we leave no stone unturned in our coverage 
This is Grizz Post basketball player Ben Carter on the right side of your screen, and many people say he has a striking resemblance to another famous Post, the one and only Post Malone, the well-known rapper, songwriter, and producer. The resemblance is uncanny. Carter is definitely White Iverson, but what does he think? We decided to ask Carter about the resemblance, and here's what he had to say. How, how often do people say you look like Post Malone? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I definitely, definitely get it once or twice every every game. Actually, the uh, the team or the crowd will say something about it. So, so are you are you just embracing it at this point? Yeah, I embrace it. I, I mean, there's nothing I can really do about it. So I just, yeah, I just embrace it. Do you like his music? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think he has good music. So. Ah, no, I think he looks exactly like him, but Ben Carter is just a freshman, so we'll see if we can get him into a uh, potential mixtape before his career is up at the Grizz. Anyway, back to business now. The Grizzlies certainly are treating their trip to Iowa as a business trip this week with a rematch against the Michigan... Welcome back to the show, everybody. Today is Tuesday, which means it's your lucky day because we have a hot off the press student of the week feature for you. We stay right here in Missoula to tell the story of a Florence Carlton figure skater who won't let society define his success. Lawrence Carlton senior Justin Herget is not your normal 18-year-old boy. He's Good evening, everyone. Welcome to yet another edition of SWX. Tonight, there's an exclamation mark. There you go. In the, <laughs> in the prompter, so I had to give it a... Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Sean Rady. And I'm Keith Molder. In the normal world, they say TGIF, but here on the show, we say TGITFSWXT. Thank goodness it's time for SWX tonight and for our viewers in Bozeman. It's also time for some celebration as their new head coach took center stage. That was a lot of letters. Former <laughs> Bobcat guard and newest Montana State head coach Danny Sprinkle made his